today's question is what are the causes of poor circulation and how to treat it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, poor circulation is a very common complaint in my students and it can happen actually in various organs, tissues. Uh, one of the topics which we discussed in previous videos was related to poor circulation in hands and feet. But apart from that, of course, it's common for people to suffer from poor circulation virtually in any other organ. Uh, for example, brain can have poor circulation and that can cause problems and doctors are actually trying to improve blood flow uh, or perfusion of the brain, as we call it, when even people have cancers of the brain because when we improve circulation, we are able to provide more oxygen and oxygen will be able to reduce or even fight with malignant cells. The same would relate to when people have cancers in other organs, but it's not necessarily cancer, many other conditions when people have severe problems with, for example, kidneys or liver or many other conditions. Doctors actually are trying to find medical drugs in order to improve blood flow to these specific organs, be it kidneys when people have nephritis or pilonephritis or chronic kidney disease, or when people have liver problems, liver cirrhosis, some other conditions, lungs themselves, heart, uh, gastrointestinal tract. All these organs can have poor circulation and again, thousands of top medical scientists are looking for solution to this problem. But if we're looking at medical facts and we are looking for a substance which is the most potent vasodilator, the substance which is able to dilate arteries and arterioles, and this is a central factor that improves circulation to a certain tissue or organ of the human body, then the answer would be following. The most potent vasodilator, known vasodilator, is carbon dioxide. the gas that we exhale. And so now we can think, okay, if this is the most potent vasodilator, do people with health problems, whatever health problems like they may have, again, cancer or diabetes or digestive problems or heart disease or brain cancers, do these people have reduced level of CO2 in their arterial blood? That would be the next question then. And here we have many, many studies. I have tables like with, you can open normalbriefing.com website, more than 30 studies which measure it, ventilation, how much people breathe in people with chronic diseases. And all these studies testify that people with chronic diseases in average breathe about two, three times more than the medical norm. And in addition to that, there are 20, more than 20 studies showing historical graph how breathing in average population among normal subjects uh, has been changed during the last 100 years of time. And the graph goes like this. So the ventilation in the past was very small. People used to breathe around 4-5 liters per minute. Very small amount of air that would allow people to have much more oxygen due to much higher CO2 level. So here's the trick actually how it works. When people have easy quiet breathing, the level of CO2 is high and therefore blood vessels are expanded. And that allows them to have better circulation and better blood flow to all vital organs, to extremities, to muscles and other tissues of the human body. That was common 100 years ago, and we have these medical studies to confirm that. Now, modern people hyperventilate. They breathe much more, and I spoke with thousands of people during my lectures, talks, workshops. And more than 90% of people believe that if you breathe more air, you get more oxygen, but this is not true, because when we hyperventilate, according to hundreds of medical studies, we get reduced circulation, reduce blood flow to all vital organs. So therefore the answer to put circulation would relate to breathing retraining. So when people start to slow down their breathing naturally using breathing exercises, physical exercise with 100% nose breathing and lifestyle changes related to sleep, diet, some other factors of life which relates to body oxygenation, to circulation, then these people are able to gradually improve the body oxygen test results, we do special body oxygen tests, which measured in seconds. So that's a number which actually has perfect correlation with circulation. So people with very poor circulation would commonly have only maybe 10-15 seconds for the body oxygen test, meaning that the circulation is dramatically less than normal. And when people start to improve their breathing, start to slow down, normalize their breathing, getting closer and closer to the medical norm, 
The body oxygen test result is going to get high up to 20, 25 seconds. And already at this stage, there is a dramatic improvement in circulation related to all vital organs. So we use CO2, carbon dioxide, as a central factor to improve blood flow or circulation to all vital organs of the human body and to extremities as well. So we are able to move in this direction step by step, week after week students get better results. And when we achieve 30-40 seconds, there, is a tissue ch there are tissue changes which are able to improve whatever health conditions people experience. That relates to breathing, retraining uh, and put circulation. In addition to that, if you look actually at the next very powerful chemical substance which human body produces naturally, we produce it actually from, uh, from arginine, amino acid, and the substance is called nitric oxide. Last 15-20 um, years in medicine, there are literally thousands of studies. It's one of the uh, most researched substances, nit nitric oxide, because it's a powerful hormone which is very strong vasodilator, probably second to the carbon dioxide. And we produce nitric oxide uh, among other parts of our body in our sinuses. So when we produce it on our sinuses, we inhale nitric oxide into our lungs. It has strong disinfective properties for, for the lungs, helps to kill germs, bacteria in the lungs, in sinuses as well. So nose breathing uh, is very beneficial from this viewpoint. But in addition to that nitric oxide, the same nitric oxide goes into the bloodstream and it allows to dilate blood vessels. So therefore, not nasal breathing or breathing only through the nose day and night Another very powerful factor which allows people to have better circulation, better blood flow. And those people who had problems with uh, blocked nose or sinusitis, or chronic sinusitis especially, and they switch to mouth breathing, we actually notice how mind get kind of foggy, like unpleasant sensation, loss of concentration and other negative effects due to mouth breathing. So therefore, it's good also... Uh, to know that nose breathing, 100% nose breathing, or using even techniques like mouth taping at night and some other techniques, there is a simple breathing exercise, how to unblock nose, we have it on our YouTube channel. In one, two minutes, up to 90% of people are able to up, uh, unblock their nose using simple breathing exercise. But to have, again, a permanent solution, to have a treatment or cure for various health problems related to put circulation, we need to retrain our breathing back to the medical norm. And we have more information of, uh, about various effects, various health conditions, how to retrain breathing, how to develop diaphragmatic breathing, and so on, on the pages of normalbreathing.com and uh, on our videos on this channel.